Breaking news from Major League Baseball where Shohei Otani is signing with the Los Angeles Dodgers. The two-way superstar will get a 10-year deal worth $700 million. That's far and away the largest contract in the history of North American sports. The 29-year-old coming off of his second career MVP award when he led the American lead in home runs, slugging percentage, and on-base percentage. He also went 10-5 with a 314 ERA across 23 starts. And so talking about that number, 10 years, $700 million. How does that stack up to other notable stars in the sports world? It absolutely blows away Lionel Messi's deal with Barcelona. He's also got guys like Cristiano Ronaldo, Mike Trout, his deal really kick-starting a lot of how these big money baseball contracts look. So it is certainly unprecedented to see this amount of money given to a star. So let's talk about what this means for both the Dodgers and Shohei Otani go fo going forward as we welcome in David Sampson. David, I just want to open the floor to you. Uh, 10 years, $700 million, your initial reaction to that contract and that number. Well, I'm not shocked by the 10 years. I think you're seeing baseball teams sign free agents to deals well into their late 30s. But I had no idea that it would be at the $70 million per year mark. And we talked about Otani as a top of the rotation starter and Scherzer and Verlander at 43. Let's give him 43 million. Okay. Then we talk about him as the middle of the order bat. Middle of the order bat, Aaron Judge, Mike Trout. 35 million dollars all of a sudden you can see where the 70 million comes from here's the problem he's not going to be a top of the rotation starter this year he's not going to pitch at all so this year you're paying 70 million just for the bat i thought there would be incentives i thought that there would be some recognition that he may not ever pitch at the level that he had pitched at before this second elbow surgery but the dodgers said no problem, you're going to be the best pitcher and the best hitter every year for the next 10 years. So just kind of going off that, as we take a look at some of Otani's numbers from the 2023 season, David, you mentioned that he won't be pitching in this upcoming year. How does this number sort of quantify, or I guess not quantify, the fact that he won't be pitching? And just your thoughts on him being a two-way star and getting this type of deal. Well, I've never seen a player like this in my entire 18 years someone with the ability to be a frontline starter and a middle of the order hitter what has always concerned me is the ability to do it long term and he's shown year after year he can do it except this is now his second elbow surgery and there are not many pitchers who come back from two elbow surgeries it does happen nathan Avaldi is an example but it is very rare for someone to come back and be as effective as they were and what the Dodgers are hoping is that he'll be even more effective than he was. So for me, Otani has no risk at all. He got the Dodgers to pay as though he is at his best for the entire time. And I absolutely understand why Otani is in L.A. with the Dodgers. But make no mistake, this was about money. There was no other team offering him $70 million a year for 10 years. Yeah, it's so interesting when you read that Instagram post. He apologized off the top of it for taking so long to make a decision. But when $700 million is on the line, you take all the time you need there in those discussions. Uh, now, David, you've been a part of contracts, maybe not quite this magnitude that we're seeing, but you've been a part of big contracts as well. Take us inside of what the Dodgers front office sort of had to navigate when they were putting together this contract. We just heard from Jim Bowden. He kind of described the urgency with some of the news happening last night with him possibly being in Toronto. Just take us inside that front office room and the decision to put this contract together. Boy, I certainly hope the Dodgers are smart enough not to pay attention to anyone in the media who's tweeting and using that as leverage because Andrew Friedman, known him for 18 years, that is not Andrew Friedman. He did not look at all the mistaken reporting yesterday with Toronto and say, you know what? Let's go to 700. We were at 600. One private plane flight, 100 million? No, the Dodgers don't operate that way. Not out of desperation, not out of urgency. When I signed Giancarlo Stanton, it was the largest deal at the time, $325 million. And the way that went is we offered him a number where he could not say no. So one of the things when you want a player, you can say to the player, we're not negotiating. You tell me the number and we're either in or we're out. 
But if you tell me the number and we say yes, then you're a Dodger. And that seems to me what happened here because no one had even thought about $70 million per year over 10 years. $60 million would have been absolutely at the top end without injury. So the Dodgers seem to me that they have blown away all of their other competitors. And for Shohei, it makes sense. He gets to stay home. All the media who covers him doesn't have to move to Toronto or San Francisco or New York or anywhere else. So I understand Shohei. I understand everyone except for the Dodgers. <laughs> it has certainly set a precedent for how teams potentially will have to negotiate in the future. But let's talk about David, the team he's leaving behind. The Angels, of course, now without a Shohei Otani on the roster. How do they proceed now that they've lost their two-way star? Well, certainly when you think about payroll, and we have to mention the Dodgers along with the Angels, when you have a player making $70 million, the general rule is you don't want any one player making more than 20% of your payroll. And if you're paying Otani $70 million to be two players, a pitcher and a hitter, the math has a chance to work. But this next year, he's one player, just the hitter. So even a payroll of $350 million, that would have him at 20% assuming they're paying him 70 this year and not deferring it. And we're going to figure out whether or not that's the case. The Angels wanted him back, but they also recognized they had Otani and Trout, and they didn't win one playoff game. Not one. I thought there was a chance he'd go back to the Angels. But now the Angels get to say goodbye to Otani, and they get to reallocate payroll, and they get to try to do something for their fans that Artie Moreno has never been able to do, and that's actually win. The ultimate irony of all of this, can you imagine if the Angels under Ron Washington make the playoffs in the American League in their first year without Shohei Otani? It is certainly going to be an interesting 2024 season, but we kick it off with one of the biggest headlines we have seen. David Sampson, thanks so much for your time and for your insight. Now, we talked a lot about the impact on how this will impact the Dodgers season. Here's how it's impacting the odds to win the World Series. Look who is up there at the top. The L.A. Dodgers at plus 500 to win the World Series. It is certainly a groundbreaking move now that Shohei Otani set to join L.A. on a 10-year, $700 million deal.